G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Friday afternoon here, so the weekend is upon us and we have had quite a strong bounce back. So 7.6%, so I mean, <laughs> that's really, really good and we're getting close to that $1.5 trillion mark again, which is nice. But, as I just said previously, the weekend is upon us and there's traditionally, and again it's most weekends, not all though, but there's traditionally a weekend pullback. So I don't want to get too excited just yet. But look, we were down, you know, getting close to one point, you know, one, one point sort of two trillion and now we're up at nearly 1.5 trillion. We've got to be pretty happy with that. But again, we just got to be mindful the weekend's coming. All right, Bitcoin dominance 45.3%, so nice. ETH dominance, 16%, dropped a little bit, and gas prices stabilized a little bit. So it seems people aren't sort of too hectic with, you know, jumping in and out of uh, stable coins and, you know, diving into too many alts and things. But look, some people are still buying alts. And tomorrow, I'm going to do an update of some alts. Because again, they're, they're still on a fire sale at the moment. Now, for me, I'm sticking to Bitcoin and Ethereum at the moment. I want to see what happens with the market before I sort of jump back into the alts. But as they say, fortune favors the brave. So if you're brave enough to dive into the alts, then you know it could pay off big time for you. But also, uh, you know, fortune likes to make you know fools of you know people who acted uh, a bit uh, in too impulsively. Or in, I don't know what that word is. Uh, you know, too quickly. So again, we'll have that look at that tomorrow. But anyway, what we can see is there's you know there's a fair bit of green there in the last 24 hours. But, you know, we just got to jump to the right-hand side of that and see over the last seven days, things aren't looking so pretty. All right, so let's have a look. What's done well in the last 24 hours? Because we know 7.6% has been to the upside, and that's in the total market cap. Holy dooly, Ecomi, 128% in the last 24 hours. So I'm going to say that jumped from outside the top 100 and made it into the uh, 100. So nice, uh, very well to them. And 60% in the last seven days. Dogecoin, 24% in the last 24 hours. Thorchain, Quant, Nano, Stacks, you know, we're basically, we can round that up, 20% gains. So for me, 15% and above in 24 hours is a good gain. Uh, anything under it is, you know, it's it's just a regular kind of gain. And again, any gain's a good gain. Uh, take those over losses any day. But again, we need to jump to the right-hand side. And while we see they're up 23%, that's great. Majority of these are still down. And it's a downward trending market in sort of general. You know, have we found the bottom? And are we going to the, you know, to the upside? Who knows? All right. What hasn't done so well, though? Has there any been anything that's been really sort of, you know, smacked about considering, again, it's generally still a kind of downward trending market? All right, internet computer, we've got a story coming up about that. And look, you know, this kind of says it all. $35. <whistles> that is a long way down from where it was. And, then, you know, again, when we get to the story, uh, and that's way over here, we'll look at the price that it was before. Now, this could be a great buy. If you, you know, hadn't got into internet computer but were thinking about it, and there's a lot of promise around this uh, this tech, but unfortunately it seems like, you know, when it first came out, like most things that really came out in the last kind of few months, they're all just way overpriced because the market was, you know, bubbling so high. And if we found the bottom, this could be a fantastic entry point. Uh, again, we'll get to that. But, you know, 24, so 24 hours is really, there's a, two tokens that had a few minor percentage losses and then everything you know everything else you're really starting to go into the gains so fairly bullish let's go over to bitcoin and sort of see where we are so again we're still traveling within this range still somewhere between sort of 42,000 and all the way down to about 28,000 now what we can see here is we had that fake out that i spoke to you about the other day and that's what it was just a fake out because then we broke down lower now we're at a fake out again. We're breaking this, you know, downward trending resistance. Will this last is the question. I don't think it will. I think this is going to roll over uh, this weekend and we're going to come back down below. Look, I don't expect us to go too much lower, but, you know, again, who knows what it's really going to do. We can take guesses and I suspect that we just continue to roll over 
and I really do think we kind of stay under this line for a while before we break up. I don't expect Bitcoin to break down below $28,000 and we'll just round this up to roughly $28,000. But that's not to say that it won't. And if it does, as we spoke about this the other day, really we're then looking at around about sort of $24,000. That's where it'll probably go to if it breaks that. And look, it could possibly go lower and come back down and retest, you know, sort of 20 ish thousand dollars. That's something we need to keep in mind. Do I think it's going to do that? No. Uh, am I prepared if it does? Absolutely. Uh, and my preparation is if it gets down to those prices, I just keep buying more of it. And again, because this market is still so sort of choppy and we are still generally other than this in a bit of a downwards trend, I'm really just going to focus on Bitcoin and Ethereum until I see something that clearly shows me. And again, even if we break down below, but we just keep chopping within this range, again, anywhere between 28,000 to roughly 42,000, this is not an overall bearish market. This is still a good market. It just means Bitcoin is, you know, shaking out all the, all the weak hands and particularly, you know, trying to drain all the altcoins. And there's a reason for that because once these Bitcoin whales and that, have shaken everyone out, particularly out of, you know, the altcoins and that, and they're going to have made a ton of profits here, longing Bitcoin, shorting Bitcoin, longing Bitcoin, shorting Bitcoin. And then they're going to let Bitcoin start to run. And as Bitcoin starts to run, guess what they're doing? They're getting into the alts and they wait for Bitcoin to get to its top. Then they wait for the altcoins to do its thing. As Bitcoin starts to drop, they're starting to, you know, take profits from their alts and they recycle them back into Bitcoin. And that is literally the cycle. It's been happening for a number of years now and I don't see it stopping. So for me, I want to try and do what the big money does. So when I see Bitcoin start to run, I'm not going to be putting a lot of money into Bitcoin. I'll still put some, but really once we start to break all-time highs of Bitcoin, I'll definitely be slowing right down on how much money goes into Bitcoin. And I will start to take some profits, only very small profits, from Bitcoin as it starts to run. Now, you know, for me, it might be sort of 80,000, it might be 100,000, might be 120,000. You know, you have to kind of take your pick on where you think the market's going. Take minor profits. And again, once Bitcoin's running, I will start to put some money into the alts because the alts will then run after Bitcoin and then again cycle back in between. But also making sure I've got some stable coins sitting on the side because at some stage this market will hit its peak and then we'll have a severe correction. Look, whether it's going to be as severe as the other previous corrections, who knows? None of us thought, you know, and me including, I was, I was unsure, not unsure, I just didn't think we'd ever see like a really sort of 50% correction from Bitcoin uh, within a bull market again. And sure enough, we did. The market just got overheated. So for me, I'm just going to stick with uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum until I see, you know, stop getting so choppy. It either makes a big move to the upside or it makes a big move to the downside and then we see some kind of bottoming formation. At the moment, this isn't bottoming. This is just choppy. And again, this is, you know, full market manipulation. You know, the big players, whales and institutions just trying to shake everybody who's not legit and can't handle it out. And, you know, they won't be shaking me out. Again, I've learned my lessons from panic selling. I still panic buy on occasions and that's not so much I panic buy into pumps. I panic buy when I see things come down this low and I go, absolutely, I'm buying. But again, I don't care if it goes lower. I'll just continue to buy the lower prices. I'm only looking at when I bought Bitcoin at sort of 34000 If it gets back to its old all-time high, I've basically doubled my money. And I know it will at some stage. I just don't know exactly when. And as always, I've got to tell you, none of what I say is ever financial advice. I hate having to say that, but that's true. I don't want you to think that I'm some financial advisor uh, that I am not. I'm just a crypto enthusiast like most of you here. Uh, and I really like this space and I think this is the best place to put my money. That's me though. All right, let's move on. Some really, really interesting stories. So Plan B says he is feeling uneasy. Well, I don't think he says this, but this is what the article says, Cointelegraph. Plan B, feeling uneasy as 41% of his followers tip 100k Bitcoin won't happen this year. So this will be very, very interesting. Now we go down here and it says, what a difference three months make. 
41% now think Bitcoin will stay below 100k in 2020, what? 2021, excuse me, invalidating the S2F model as 16% versus 16% in March. So back in March, everyone was super bullish. It's going to 100k plus. Now everyone's saying uh, it will stay behind, under 100k. So here's my take on this. We know we got big players here. I think his model is correct, but I think the big players will try to keep it below. And they're going to do as much as they can to keep it as low as they can for as long as they can, knowing eventually it absolutely is going to reach these prices. I've got no doubt Bitcoin's going to make $100,000 plus in the future. You know, before kind of we had so much, you know, of the big players getting in now, you know, institutions and things like that. I think the public, you know, probably would have run it up to pretty close to that uh, price. But the fact is to get above 100K, we need the institutional money. And they're gonna do as much as they can to keep it below that before, you know, so they can get as much as they can before they let it go to those prices. So I think Bitcoin will absolutely go to 100 plus thousand dollars. I'm just not sure if it's gonna happen this year. And it's not because plan B's model is wrong it's because i think the big players unless they've got the positions that they want they won't allow that to happen they don't want it to get out of their reach they want to you know get as much of their stuff as they can before that happens and at these prices at 30,000 at 40,000 and maybe even 22 and you know 24,000 dollars and things like that hence why for the average person as my video uh, showed yesterday i just dollar cost average that's really what I do. And again, when Bitcoin's into price discovery, I'm definitely putting a lot less into Bitcoin and I'm focusing more on the alts because that means Bitcoin's going on its run and the alts are going to follow after that. And then when the alts are starting to go crazy, I start to take some profits out of that and I put them back into Bitcoin because Bitcoin's already usually dumped. Then the strategic move there is how much you're putting back into Bitcoin and how much you're putting into altcoins. Or if you just cycle between the two and you're not really worried about, you know, trying to time the market a little bit, then just simply cycling between alts and Bitcoin can be a really good play. But again, none of that's financial advice and you need to work all that out for yourself. But again, very interesting how much of a difference three months can make. I still believe Bitcoin goes over 100,000 and, you know, I still think it'll probably go over 100,000 this year. I just think, you know, the 288,000 mark, that'll be hard to achieve now that the big guys are here. They're not going to let that happen. They're going to manipulate the market a lot before they let it kind of go to those astronomical prices. Because again, this was his thing. But he has come out and said that he thinks at minimum 125,000. But again, the problem is now that he said 125,000, you know, the big guys are trying to be get out earlier and then there'll be some, you know, little players trying to get out earlier. And if everyone's trying to get out a little bit earlier than the other person, then Bitcoin will just never make it to those prices. And that is the problem when you get to, you know, as markets get bigger. Yeah, that's my take on that. All right, moving on. So Mike Novogratz suggests DeFi projects add KYC and AML features now instead of waiting on regulators to crack down on the entire sector. I have to kind of agree with this. You know, I like decentralization and privacy and all the rest of it. But to, you know, make sure that we can get rid of anti-money anti laundering and things like that. And that means we have to have KYC, which is know your customer. Unfortunately, I think this does have to come. And you know you can go down here, and this is basically what his tweet said. Starting to think that major DeFi protocols are going to have to decide if they're going to play by the rules that most countries want them to. So that's know your customer, i.e. you have your details behind your wallets and that, and AML, anti-money laundering rules. Or if they're going to flip the middle finger at them, invest in a compliance layer now or pay the piper later. And that's exactly what I think is going to happen. I think a number of these uh, DeFi projects, if they want to last and are going to be legit, are going to have to have all of this. If they try and yeah, buck the trend, I think they're going to have a really hard time and you know, countries and regulations will just really, really crack down on them. So you know, I love DeFi. I think it's great. I think that's where life-changing wealth is going to come for. And you know, a lot of people say, oh, but they'll be so decentralized, you can't shut down the internet. No, but if they really want to crack down on things, I think they can make it really, really hard for people to get involved in it. Uh, 
So that's what I worry about in the DeFi space. And look, I don't have any problems with KYC and AML really. Uh, again, I don't care if people know how I'm spending my money. Uh, I did speak the other day though that I was unaware that you know with some of the transactions now, not only can they see the transaction that you made, but they can see back to sort of your wallet address and how much you've got in there, uh, and you know how often it's been going on and things like that. That I don't want. I think outside of the transaction being made, there should be no other details. Again, other than it came from you, your details and how much was sent. We do need privacy, as in you know they can't see further back than that transaction. You know. For the retailers and things like that, not so much the government. I mean, the government is always going to want to know what's going on, and that's going to be very hard to stop. But I'm generally okay with those kind of things. And, you know, Mike Novogratz is a pretty smart guy, and I think he might be on the money. I think a lot of DeFi projects will be in trouble if they don't start implementing these kind of things. But again, time will tell. I like the idea of a, you know, a free market and all the rest of it. But, you know, we still kind of need to know who's doing what. So if someone is trying to break the law, we can track it back to them, you know, and get on top of them and things like that and make sure that they're appropriately uh, dealt with. All right, Engine Coin. So Engine Coin's Crypto Climate Accord goes carbon negative. So the cryptocurrency uh, industry uses approximately 150 terawatts of electricity annually, which is more than Poland, Norway, Egypt and Sweden, the company said. So that is a lot of energy and this is what a lot of people have, are worried about. But look, everything uses energy. For us to move forward, we unfortunately need to use more energy. Now we've just got to make sure it's green energy so it's not you know ruining the world. But it says here, Engine claims that its JumpNet blockchain has already achieved carbon negative status nine years ahead of schedule. So that's really, really bullish for Engine. I like Engine, I've got a position in it. It's been one of my better performing coins and I think it's gonna be massive in the NFT space and the uh, gaming space more so than NFT, but I, they're gonna go kind of hand in hand because that's where a lot of NFTs are going to be sort of, you know, forged around the gaming space but they have a lot more applications outside of that so engine for me is one of my big picks in the nft space all right arc invest so kathy woods arc invest bought 29 million shares in grayscale's bitcoin trust during the crash so arc invest went big during bitcoin's drop below thirty thousand dollars and they bought up 29 million dollars worth of shares uh, in the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. Now, Kathy Woods is considered, you know, some of the smart money, and they're buying that dip. Again, that $30,000 level is really holding strong. And I would think that if Bitcoin continues to try and drop to 30000 there will be more people like, you know, ARK Invest, me, uh, and lots of other people, and particularly big money, that are going to be buying. So that's why I think it's unlikely that we're really it's not that we can't wick below 30,000 we absolutely can and we've seen it I just think it's going to be hard to get uh, daily candle closes below that kind of 30 and more so $28,000 mark but look I've been wrong before and I could be totally wrong again and in all fairness if Bitcoin continues to dip I'm more happy because it means I can buy more at cheaper prices so when it finally does go up my gains are then even more exponential so I I am actually okay if we go into another bear market. That's not saying I want another bear market because my altcoin positions are going to get absolutely wrecked. But if we do, then so be it. I will literally just keep piling up on that Bitcoin and Ethereum. And look, even some other rolls. If we once we see a kind of bottoming formation, not just you know the market continually kind of dipping and wrecking altcoins. All right. The total number of coins locked up on Ethereum 2.0 is rapidly approaching 6 million ETH as more than 100,000 uh, 100, ETH was staked in the last 24 hours. Excuse me. So I would say a lot of this has to do with uh, EIP 1559, uh, so 1559, depending on how you want to say it. So yeah, 1559. That would be my guess. That is why it's currently getting staked. Very, very interesting. And I, again, I'm super bullish on ETH, but I'm still very nervous. They really have to get, you know, ETH 2.0, you know, sort of sorted sooner rather than later because there's too many other other chains that are really going to ca catch them. You know, Solana's making big moves. Obviously, Cardano's making big moves. 
polka dot with their parachains uh also cosmos i mean you know i'm going to do something on uh called uh the gravity decks uh it's going to be interoperable and things like that that sounds really really promising and i'm definitely looking at getting some more uh cosmos in the very near future maybe even this weekend i might buy a little bit we'll have to have a look but again very very interesting that ethereum uh is being staked in high numbers at the moment uh, and again, I am so bullish on Ethereum that that's one of the two coins that I'm happy to buy in a dumping market. Everything else is just getting uh, too brutalized for me to really put, you know, any money in it. But if I do put some money into old coins, it'll be very small amounts. And it'll be hoping that, you know, we have found the bottom. Because <laughs> I, I bought some old coins not that long ago. And, you know, some of them have just been totally wrecked since some have held up all right, but, you know, definitely a few of them, they're down 60, nearly 70% from where I bought them. And the scary thing is I bought them at about a third of the price of their old all-time highs. So, and they're still down, you know, 60% from there. So, you know, that's the crypto markets. All right. I think this is massive. All right. Andreessen Horowitz says crypto is the future of finance. And he has launched a $2.2 billion crypto venture fund. The firm is radically, and this is what he says, the firm is radically optimistic about crypto's potential to restore trust and enable new kinds of governance. Uh, I, I agree. I think, you know, most of the smart minds at the moment agree that crypto is the future. This is the new finance. And that doesn't mean that the dollar dies, and particularly that the US dollar no longer has any relevance and loses, you know, uh, its place as the world reserve currency. No, definitely not. You know, there's already been people talking about that they think, you know, there's going to be a new Bretton Woods moment and there's going to be a basket of things that will hold up, you know, the world's finances. And I think that is likely to happen. I think it'll still be the US dollar. You probably have the British pound in there and then you'll start to see other things. And I think cryptocurrency, particularly Bitcoin, might be in there. Whether it gets in sort of, you know, when this next Bretton Wood moment happens, that's hard to say, but I think definitely in the future... Bitcoin uh, will be will be in there and look maybe some other crypto that we haven't you know even sort of thought of you know I'm not saying it's going to be but maybe Litecoin for whatever reason it's you know more transactable you know faster and all the rest of it who knows but I do think that's where it's going now we go on down here the size of this fund speaks to the size of the opportunity before us Crypto is not only the future of finance, but as within the internet in the early days, is poised to transform all aspects of our lives. Uh, again, you know, the, he is considered smart money. You know, the, the big, the big institutions and that they are considered smart money, and everyone else, including me, you, and all these YouTubers and Twitter person personalities and that. Where were they considered dumb money? And it's not that we're dumb, it's just that we don't have the, you know, billions and sometimes maybe even trillions of dollars uh, to invest in sort of things. So we are what they consider dumb money. I, I don't like that term, but that's the way it is. And the smart money, again, you know, look what they're doing, not always what they're saying. In this case, you know, maybe also look what he's saying, but they're launching $2.2 billion into crypto. And, you know, all these other companies are doing it. Why would they do that if, A, it was going to be banned, and, B, if they thought it wasn't going to be part of, you know, going forwards in the financial future? That is why I'm so bullish. That's why I continue to just dollar-cost average into crypto, period. I don't care. I think the upside for the next probably 10, possibly 20 years, is massive. Now, will the returns sort of diminish over that time? Yes, of course they will, but they are still going to be exponential. We have such a small amount of people in cryptocurrency in general. Less than, I think, 2% of the population are currently into crypto. So that means we've got 98% upside. That doesn't mean we can only get 98% more profits. No, it's exponential on top of that. You know, the amount of X's that is, I don't know. It could be hundreds, if not thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of X's on top of the prices that they're at now. At least, you know, whatever's a good project and things like that and last the stand of, you know, the test of time, as they would say. But yeah, super bullish on crypto. That's why I've got my money where my mouth is and that's why I just continue to invest, you know, fortnight after fortnight. Uh, it, it doesn't matter where the prices are going. I'm constantly putting money into this space 
because I do expect to be quite happy and pretty chuffed and stoked with myself in sort of the next five to ten years and that's the truth um, but you know again go back and look at my video from uh, I think it was yesterday I did you know dollar cost averaging and what it's done in Bitcoin just $25 a week you know for the last sort of previous three to four years could have turned into crazy money so you know if you don't have $25 then $5 it's not about how much you put in it's the percentage gains. If you've only got $5 a week, I'm gonna say it means you don't make a whole lot of money or things are really tight. You will turn that $5 into something that will probably change your life. Now, does it mean you become a multi-millionaire? No, probably not. But it'll probably be enough to really change your circumstances. Again, never financial advice, just my personal opinion that's based on what uh, has happened previously with crypto and again all this money going into it you know it's hard to think that they aren't seeing the same thing and trying to get on you know on board with it as well right last but not least as we were talking about uh internet computer protocol so infinity's icp token is now down 95 percent in nearly two months it took less than two months for the token of one of the most promising crypto projects to go down to $34 from $630. This is why I say, you know, altcoins, their gains are unbelievable. They can absolutely go through the roof, you know, 100x, 1000x. But geez, when they dump, they can really, really dump as well. And look, I don't know too much about uh, internet computer uh, protocol. But I've heard some good things about it. I've heard some bad things about it as well. But unfortunately, their token came out right when things were kind of, you know, really crazy. And I saw it at $400 and then I saw it go up to $630. And I was like, oh, God, I missed that. It would have been nice to get onto it. And now it's down at $34. So, you know, glad I didn't buy it then. But if you really, really like the token, $34 sounds like an absolute steal. That's basically a 3x to get to $100, and then you times that 3x by 6 to get back to here. Now, no guarantees in life that it'll ever make it back to $630. Maybe this project is just completely dead in the water, and I'm not saying it is, but if you liked it at $400 and $600, but it was just out of your reach, $34 is sounding pretty sweet. But again, we just need to be careful. If Bitcoin goes down more than this $34 per token could easily turn into, you know, maybe $4 per token. And again, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. It's just what we need to be mindful of. And again, that's what I mean. That's going to hurt if you buy at $34 and then all of a sudden we get rid of that three and all you've got is $4 per share. Ouch. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. We should all be on that gain train at the moment, at least in the short term, sort of, you know, uh, you know, since the last couple of months, not so much. But anyway, I'll see you next time.